should we expect to see the spirit acting as he does in the book of acts today uh, are the gifts of the spirit for us today uh, what is the biblical argument for cessationism does it stand up to scrutiny i mean we could do a, right. a whole set of shows on this but you, you, you but, could yeah. but i think i think the biblical argument for for cessationism goes back to first corinthians 13 where paul says um whether there be tongues they shall cease mm. uh, but he doesn't actually say when right. and it looks as though in that passage in first corinthians 13 he's actually talking about the ultimate future and that in the present there are all mm. sorts of gifts which won't be necessary in the future and he's contrasting because we'll that be known and just as we are fully known exactly yeah, yeah. exactly he's contrasting that with love which will be all the more important mm. in god's new creation um you know we won't stop loving in right. god's new creation but there are all sorts of things we won't need to do anymore and speaking in tongues will be one of them and i see speaking in tongues and i don't know whether um, some or all gifts of tongues are purely angelic tongues or purely different kinds of human tongues. I do know people, I have met people who have found themselves strongly led to speak in tongues on a crowded bus and somebody comes up to them and says, how come you speak fluent Hindustani or whatever it is? Mm. And, you know, I have no doubt that that happens. I have no reason to doubt the people who tell me it's happened, just like I have no reason to doubt the people who describe having been very sick in a particular way and then through prayer, God has remarkably and mm. unexpectedly and inexplicably has healed them um god does all sorts of odd things and i i think there's a sort of christian fear and rationalism sometimes that doesn't want god mm. to act in that way because it might sort of imply that we're short I, of something I, I, it's interesting i mean J jason asked specifically on this question as well he's from ohio and says um what are your thoughts on the gift of tongues um, and again mentions those who are cessationists with regards to mm, that but mm. says um, yet there seem to be ch early church writers that mention their continued demonstration sure, sure. among the Montanists and by Orthodox Christians like Tertullian um, and what about those who speak in tongues today um, and he mentions that uh, I actually had an interview with uh, my namesake Justin Welby mm, mm. Um, in which he talked about speaking in tongues and sure, using that as a way of, sure. of, of praying essentially yes, in yes. his private devotions yes. and and it, Jason simply wants to know, well, what do you think of, of yes, that, that I, use of I, that's, that's, what, that's where I am too. I, I, in 1986, I was leaving Montreal and was going to be coming back to Oxford as a college chaplain as well as a university lecturer. And I was quite nervous about that because I had been in academic work um, for several years and the thought of suddenly being plunged into a vivid little community um, where there were uh, hundreds of people who would come to me for spiritual mm. counsel and help and I wouldn't have a clue what to say to them. I remember sharing this with a cousin of mine who was in a quiet way a charismatic Christian in Canada in Winnipeg um, and she said well it may well be that God will give you a gift like the gift of tongues and she prayed with me and the next thing I knew I was praying in tongues. Right. Um, very startled this wasn't supposed to happen <laughs> i hadn't known when i was going to stay with this cousin that any <laughs> such thing was on the agenda at all right but she was absolutely right that the many many times that was 1986 so 30 years ago and plus um when i have needed to pray into a particular situation but have actually no i have had no idea of a specific thing that i ought to be praying for now paul says something like that in romans 8 we don't know what to pray mm -hmm. for but the spirit prays within us yes. um i'm not sure that in romans 8 he's talking about praying in tongues though some people have said that i have a phd student who's working on that very question as we speak right. um but uh be that as it may i have found on many 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 occasions that the use of tongues in private prayer i've never exercised this gift in public mm. i have no particular desire to mm. um has enabled me to hold people and situations within the love of god mm. in a way which for some reason seems to be different from just saying i pray for so-and-so um, and i'm just content with that and and um, for those who haven't had that experience that doesn't make you a, a more superior no, no. Prep, person of, of prayer of course, to them. Of course not. Of course <laughs> not. No, 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 no. Um, and indeed, some of the most prayerful people I know would be in quite other traditions, like, mm. say, the Russian Orthodox or whatever, mm. where they seem to be able, through their traditions, to go into a prayer space, which is different again. Right. And fine, hallelujah, they have their problems, we have our problems. I, I resist any kind of elitism mm, that says, mm. oh, they're the real, they're the real deal sure. and the rest of us are just yeah. paddling around. So, so yes, tongues is a great gift. It's not given to everybody, but I find for certain purposes it's, it's really 
just 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 to quickly sort of wrap up the cessationist piece as well mm, i mean mm. when i've hosted debates on that particular issue one of the criticisms from the cessationists has been the idea that well if prophecy and tongues and so on uh, are for today then that effectively means we're adding to the canon of what god has said yeah, uh, yeah, these yeah. are these it's, are the, you're putting them on a par with the with words scripture. of scripture it, and and that can be done and that sometimes has been done and that's very very dangerous um it's rare in my life that people have had words of prophecy which are specifically and sort of dramatically, this is what God is saying mm -hmm. to you. There have been rare occasions when that has actually been the case, and Maggie and I have had to say, oh my goodness, this mm -hmm. looks as though this is a real word from the Lord. But no, I'm not sort of binding that up with Scripture. Mm -hmm. um, I'm saying God is good and God is gracious and God can do that. But of course, at every point, we are trying to be scripturally formed Christians mm -hmm. who then discern different words that can be as spoken. As we're asked to in Scripture. As we're asked to in Scripture. And it's perfectly possible, as you've, and very interestingly, in the Acts of the Apostles, when Paul is on his way to Jerusalem, various people are saying to him in the Spirit, mm. don't you dare go mm. to Jerusalem, mm. it's going to be bad news. And Paul says, actually, this is what I have to do. And so he doesn't say that those people were demon-possessed. Mm. He says they were speaking in the spirit, but they told Paul not right. to go to Jerusalem, and Paul went so and did. There's something anyway. a little bit different about that kind of yep. revelation, yep. as opposed yep. to as, yep. as yep. it were the uh, and scriptural. and uh, it, it is a matter of discernment, mm. and that takes wisdom. It takes often a community, or at least a fellowship of prayer, of people gathering round and praying together, and then a corporate wisdom. The, the danger with our modern individualism is we think we, we've, we've got to do it all ourselves. Mm. And mm. the answer is no, we're given the church to be the, the body of Christ. For podcast episodes, bonus content, and to ask your question, sign up at askntright.com.